Welcome to another episode of the Jam Pack Report, today for April the 6th of 2021. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams, and this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest news you need to know from around the industry. Hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week, it's your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. So if you enjoy the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. Yesterday, we saw some very big announcements for PlayStation Now, Sony's game subscription service, because Marvel's Avengers, Borderlands 3, and The Long Dark are all coming to the service in April, and they're available starting today. This news comes from Adam Mitchell, Senior Manager of Game Services Content at Sony Interactive Entertainment. April's PlayStation Now lineup is a titanic team up featuring Marvel's Avengers, Borderlands 3, and The Long Dark. Save the world, shoot up a galaxy, or survive an icy wilderness. Take your pick from tomorrow when the games launch into the service. Let's take a closer look at each in turn. Of course, they have Marvel's Avengers in a brief write-up. This is the games-as-a-service approach that Square Enix has taken to the world of Marvel's Avengers. Not a bad game. It has improved a good bit, but it's still not the game that people were really hoping that it would be. Borderlands 3, of course, one of the biggest looter shooters released in the past five years. Not quite to the critical acclaim of Borderlands 2, uh, but it still is one that is pretty well received by fans, even if the loot grind is set up a bit differently, and The Long Dark is a thoughtful exploration survival experiences that challenges solo players to think for themselves as they explore an expansive frozen wilderness in the aftermath of a geomagnetic disaster. There are no zombies, only you, the cold, and all the threats Mother Nature can muster. So those are your three big additions to the service for the month of April. First and foremost, I want to talk about PlayStation Now versus Xbox Game Pass because I see the comparison made and as it stands right now, Game Pass dominates PlayStation Now. But the way that that is remedied is by making moves like this. Marvel's Avengers coming to PlayStation Now is a very enticing opportunity for people to at least download a free trial of PlayStation Now to play Marvel's Avengers. That's very significant. These are big games that require big player bases, and to expand those and to add them to a subscription service allows for more people to discover the game. The same goes for Borderlands 3. It's very co-op heavy, and so to be able to dive in and immediately find somebody, or if you have friends with PlayStation Plus, or excuse me, PlayStation Now, you can just buddy up with your friends without having to actually buy the game. And then on top of that, if you do enjoy the grind of Borderlands 3, you can buy that DLC, and they make more money that way as well through microtransactions that continue to rise in popularity because the game itself has continued to rise in popularity. And the same could be said for Marvel's Avengers as well. Of course, The Long Dark is kind of off on its own little plane over here here, Uh, but these two are very big additions, and this is what I want to see more of, because for PlayStation Now to compete with Game Pass, it needs number one big games, and it needs Sony to treat it like a priority. I never hear about PlayStation Now outside of the small announcements like this that are just games being added to the service. There needs to be a consistent flow of news coming out about PlayStation Now that is significant, and they have to improve the service itself. I have not sat down and played anything on PlayStation Now since July of 2020, and when I did that, I was streaming it, and it was not the experience that I wanted. Lag that made most games unplayable uh, to some degree. It was okay, but the latency just did not work well with me. Uh, And so with all of that being considered, PlayStation could improve their service and they could be a legitimate competitor with Microsoft when it comes to games subscription services if they just take it a little bit more seriously. And I think it's a move like this that shows they are in fact taking it a little bit more seriously. Again, if you want to dive in right now, there is a free one month trial of PlayStation Now, or it could be a two week trial. Hold on, let's find out. Uh, If you haven't tried PlayStation Now yet, now is the perfect time to give it a spin with a seven day free trial for PS4 and PS5. Seven days, boom, dive in, see if you like it, and this could be the subscription service that ticks you over the edge and brings you into that subscription based model in the PlayStation universe. 
Here's a story that actually broke on April the 1st, but that many people are just now picking up on. Tencent-owned studio behind Call of Duty Mobile reportedly earned $10 billion in 2020. This is according to an April 1st Reuters report that said Timmy, the world's largest developer, of course, according to its sources, did bring in $10 billion in revenue. Now, that could be Timmy, that could be Tom, however you want to say it, T-I-M-I. You might not know this, but it is the team behind the very, very popular Call of Duty Mobile and the MOBA Honor of Kings. Between those two games, they made more money than Activision Blizzard itself, which posted 2020 revenues of $8.09 billion, according to The Verge's Jay Peters. That is nearly $2 billion less than this Timmy Teamy company. This is why I bring this story up. You think gaming is big in the limelight. You think gaming is big in these huge companies that are first and foremost front and center when you think about the world of gaming. But behind the scenes, these mobile games that you might just write off as poor mobile ports of big experiences that you would want to actually play, those are the games that are making the big bucks. And I've played a good bit of Call of Duty Mobile. Very solid game. Haven't played much of Honor of Kings. I think I downloaded it once. But mobile is where it's at because a lot of people are playing on the go. And of course, as the pandemic continues to give a lot of people more free time as they can't go out and do things, uh, this is a fantastic time to dive into a mobile game and start investing in your gaming life. Uh, And so to see $10 billion in revenue, again, according to a Reuters report for Teeny Studios, the Tencent-owned developer of huge mobile hits, uh, this just goes to show how deep the gaming industry actually goes. And before we go, I do have one honorable mention here on our stories roster for today. The Resident Evil Reverse Open Beta will be available to preload today. Very important, if you did already check out the closed beta from earlier in January, you do not have to re-download the open beta. It is essentially the exact same file, now just more people are able to dive in and play. Uh, But this is the new multiplayer game that is coming out alongside Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village, however you want to break it down. Uh, But effectively, this is going to be a similar kind of situation as to what we saw with Resident Evil 3 Remake, where you did see that uh, asymmetric multiplayer game that was released alongside of it. Again, free experience if you want to check it out. This game will be included with Resident Evil 8, and if you want to dive in and see if it's worth your time to install it, you can check out the Reverse Open Beta, which is going to run from Thursday, April 8th until Sunday, April the 11th, and it's free for everyone on console or PC via Steam with a Capcom ID. So there you have it. It is billed as a celebration of Resident Evil's 25th anniversary, and it looks to be at least marginally interesting. In my opinion, and again, this could be included in this, I'm not picking up on that right now, I don't know why they haven't seen some kind of Call of Duty Zombies-esque mode included in one of these spin-off multiplayer titles. That's literally all we really want, just a co-op Resident Evil 2 remake. That would be ideal. That would be fantastic. Just make Jill Valentine a playable character and throw a split screen on that thing and boom, you're good to go. Ship it. That's what I would want personally. But we'll see what Capcom brings to the table. Again, if you have not played Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake, very, very good games. Highly recommend checking them out. And of course, Resident Evil 7 and 8 are very different experiences in their own right, but very good in and of themselves. That rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about everything we talked about here today. But PlayStation Now, will you subscribe? How do you feel that it fares with Game Pass? And do these games that are being added bring any value for you? Marvel's Avengers, Borderlands 3, and The Long Dark. Would love to hear your thoughts. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic Tuesday. I'll talk to you soon, and peace.